we're outside in some high country Colorado area. It's May, it's beautiful, and we've been hiking in search of the Kings Canyon mine. The road has been kind of long gone. We've had to cross over a lot of boulders and a lot of trees. It's been a while since anybody's been up here, but it appears it was worth it. I have just found the Kings Canyon mining claim. I am so excited about this. Right now I can see this was a mill for this claim. That tells me they were milling their gold right here on site. It's a little bit fallen down in disrepair, but oh, it's beautiful. And those mining signs, awesome. This is absolutely beautiful. From up here, I can get a better layout of the claim. There are more buildings over here. This would be the mining camp. Huge track, copper. This is what gets Gold Rush Expeditions excited. It's really fun that you can come out here and preserve the history. You can learn a lot by who used to own it, who came up here, who was working it. I really like the place of their Discovery Monument because there is lots of quartz, lots of copper, lots of gold around here. And I'm excited about this mineral deposit. So we're gonna go ahead and put our Discovery Monument right next to this bad boy. We've been assessing the tellings and we have found tons of copper, gold ore, quartz. All of these minerals would have washed down into a, what's that below me? A river. This claim will definitely be a load and a placer claim. You can get the mineral content, the minerals right out of the rock once we go inside the claim, or you can pan or sluice down in the river and pick up what's washed down from down below. Most likely this mine was started off of old prospectors who were panning for gold in the river below us. They would take their little pans, pan for gold, move a little bit further up the river, pan for gold. As long as they were finding gold, they would continue up the river. Once the gold stopped, they would have realized, hey, there's gold up here in the mountain. So now they would stop moving, start moving from the river up to the mountains to find where the gold was originating from, which is how this mine would have started back in the late 1800s. One thing I know this claim is huge, the size of the track. I haven't actually seen the added opening yet, but the track is huge, which says they had huge ore cars with massive amounts of ore coming out of inside the mine. We're a little bit early in the season, so we are getting a little bit of blockage from the snow. I can't exactly see the entrance to the lower at it. It may need to be cleaned out, but once the snow melts, we'll have a better idea of if this ad is actually accessible or not. You also have a hopper or an ore bin right below me here. This would have gotten ore from, you can see there was an old chute that came from, there's a second added up here. Ore would have been dropped down this chute into this hopper. This hopper would have combined with the ore that was coming out of this lower adit, and then it would have gone on, tra on track out to the mill down below us. This is actually a really easy site to assess. Some of them, it's a little bit harder to see what was going on because of the, the ruins of the site. But this one, it's pretty clear as day as to how the site was operating and what all of these buildings were here for. I'm gonna go up and see if we can't find that second adit. I just tried to hike to the upper adit. Once I got over here to these rocks, it was a little bit snowy, a little bit slippery. I like my body parts intact and not broken, so I'm not gonna go all the way up there at this point in time. We are here to explore and document as much as we possibly can, but we can't always get to it, especially when we get a little bit sk snow skunked. So the new claimant, whoever it is, is going to have a new exploration of their own. We'll give them all the historical documentation, all the historical maps, anything that we can find on this site. But when they come out here for their first time, they'll get to explore things that even I didn't get to see bring their kids up here, show their kids some history. I just wouldn't recommend doing it in the snow so you don't get hurt. Hi, Corey with Gold Rush Expeditions. We're still out here at the Kings Canyon Mine. Uh, this was a, a difficult one to find, uh, but totally, yeah, this is a magnificent site. Whoever gets this, you're not gonna regret. Um, we've just finished up with the mine itself over there. We've got a lot of buildings, we've got the mill, all that joy, but as we're noticing, there's an entire mine camp on this side of the river. So we've got a couple of buildings here, workshops, we're gonna go through all of it, but as we came across the river, we just saw this bad boy sitting here. Now, this is uh, old school stuff that you're probably not gonna see in newer days, 
This has all pretty much been uh, hand cast and then put in with cotter pins. Does anybody know what this might be? This was part of a dredge for all intents and purposes. You can see this fabric. This would have been some of your gold catching stuff. You can see it's long and it has these little scoops in it that run through. So basically, this would have gone down. I mean, you can see there's a lot of this uh, dirt that would be just perfect for dredging, but this would just roll with a big motor. You can see how it's kind of like a chain driven. And then that would just push the dirt. You'd take your heavy sands, your heavy gold that would sit in here and let the water run through it on the bottom and just let it run. Super easy way to get the gold out of anything you've got. And that is usually why miners like to use it. I would put a date on this of 1950. The, uh, the way all the metal's put together, there's some that is factory made and then there's some that is totally handmade. So this is, yeah, 1940s, 1950s at the very latest. Right now, I am super stoked to go check out some of the buildings and see what else these miners did around here. So let's go check it out. So we're still exploring Kings Canyon here. The roads up here, or the uh, lack of roads is kind of funny. Um, we, we had the discussion on the way up of, it looks like there was roads here, but I bet you they haven't been used since probably the 1970s, 1980s, I bet. This is a good sign of a industrious miner up here. So I'm putting this in a probably 1920s, 1930s coupe, two door. But uh, this is cool. See the wood here? So we had an open top car, a touring car. There's wood all around the windows, all around the top here. The seat inside the car is made of wood. The frames of the door are wood. That dates this car back quite a bit. Super awesome. Yes, yeah, such an amazing sight. So it's a truck. Now I can tell it's a truck. I've got these big old drum brakes and this big, huge diff here. Where the rest of the truck went, nobody knows, but it's a truck. Look at the size of these uh, leaf springs for the day. Huge, awesome. Another piece of it over here. Cool. Right here, what we have is an I told you so. We just came from a little farther down and it showed you the remnants of the dredge, of what I said was the dredge. And sometimes people think, oh, Corey doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just crazy. Well, here's the rest of your dredge that we found up here. I didn't know that before, but here it is. And that's freaking awesome. What you've got are the same little bits here. Can't really lift them because they're in, but you can see we've got all these little uh, pockets to catch your gold. Runs back and forth. Something on the edge there. They're pulling so much material out of this. I bet you they were crushing it at the mill. And then the extra stuff after the big operations. Here's my assessment of what happened. The mine got found. They pulled out a shit pile of gold and copper and I don't think a lot of silver, but I could be wrong. So that got worked 1870s to likely about 1910. And then people came by later, because this is high Colorado country. You start hitting your uh, depression era, 1920s, 1930s, and for whatever reason, people are leaving the hills. It's hard to process stuff, but this stuff is 1920s, 1930s. People were up here then reworking the tailings because like today, they were afraid of being underground. People back in the day were not that much different than you and I today. Not a lot of people have underground training. Not a lot of people have underground experience. So they come up, they see gold. They say, this is super awesome. I want to get gold. They bring their dredge. They bring their 1920s Model A there. They come up here, they start dredging all the old tailings and pulling gold out. Totally viable to do this exact same thing today. But guess what? You use today's dredging methods and you're gonna get 10 to 20 times as much as they were getting back then. My suggestion, as much as I think dredging is cool and panning is cool, I hate to get the little bits of gold. I like to go into the mountain. I like to find the vein, the big chunks of gold. Take that out, use that. That's what I like to do, but you're all on your own. If you guys wanna dredge this, if you guys wanna go into the mountain, you got a load and a placer. Why? Because that's what Gold Rush does. Ah. Ah. Good night. 
Whew. Man, that was rough. Whew. You filming me while I was doing that? Ah, oh, that's rough. Outhouse here, it's a two hole outhouse. There's also a small hole over here, which I find interesting and intriguing. I would say it's a pee hole. However, there may have been midgets working at this mine who could not make it to the upper deck. So they used the lower deck. We'll shoot some footage. You be the judge, midget miners or small children. This is the upper camp of the Kings Canyon mine. Kings Canyon, Colorado, amazing. I'm, I'm so excited about this mine. I just want to do a little happy dance. So cool. So much history is up here that is just kind of vanished away. And Gold Rush, this is what we do. This is what drives us, showing this history and bringing it back. People were up here because they didn't want to work for the man. They didn't want to be down in the factories. They wanted to do their own thing. They wanted to mine gold and make their own living. It's exactly what they did here. You can see this. This is a good sized building. There's bed springs inside it. Now some of the roof has come down, but look at this construction. I mean, you've got your wood notched in here. This is gonna be 1940s, 1950s. I can tell that because of the condition of the wood. And I can tell it because of the nails that they put in here. You've got a little lock. Lots of cool stuff here. You've got an ant pile here that I'm not gonna stand in because the ants will go up my leg and into my pants. Not pleasant at all. Anyway, we've got another building over here. We've got an outhouse behind us. This is, this is the American dream. This is what you wanna do. This is what I wanna do. This is, this is mining. This is what made America awesome. Now, this is also what the Forest Service might want to burn if they found it. Oh, did I just throw the Forest Service under the bus? Here we are over the next building. What is this coolness that I walked by? Hmm, it's almost like the miners were so smart that they actually built something for the water to come through so their houses didn't get jacked. This is a smaller miner's house. This may have been Miner Steve's house. Maybe Miner Steve didn't have a whole lot of money, but he put some money in along with Miner Jim. And so Miner Jim had the big house, Miner Steve had the little house. Anyway, this could be a Miner Steve's house. You got some nice windows in the back there. You got windows in the front here. We're still in our 1940s, 1950s construction, which we're still telling by the condition of the wood and the nails and just the general condition of deterioration. So over here, we have a little older building over here. Now I can tell this is older. This is gonna be your 1900 to 1920s construction. This guaranteed was here when Miner Steve and Miner Bob and Miner Jim came in. They didn't care about it. They're not up here to reconstruct stuff. They're up here to mine. So it's just left and what you've got is kind of what, what is left here. Still super cool. There's a lot that can be learned about this. And amazingly, you can actually have your history, preserve your history out here, like these cabins, do your thing, do your mining, and have the two items totally coincide with each other. Plus, you're restoring an area, you're bringing it back to its mining heyday of when things were going on, you're making money, you're leaving an imprint on history. Doing mining and doing this type of stuff is so important. I can't even stress it enough. This is, yeah, we're gonna continue on before I get too excited. Let's move on. This is what you call a blaze. Back in the day, before you had cars, before you had maps, Jim would find a mine and he would say, this is my mine, he'd give a description of the one corner of my mine, my north corner is 300 feet from the large oak tree that sits by the river here. And then I've blazed all of my corners, which would be something like this. Now, environmentalists, don't freak out. What you do to blaze a tree is you get your little pocket knife out. I don't know whether they had pocket knives back in the day. And then all you would do is just cut a piece off like that. You'd make it big enough 
that it's gonna scar kind of like this. And then that would be your blaze on your tree. Now, not only just for claims, but also for following a trail. Blazing a trail, I'm bl Wow, it's like it all comes around again. So when guys would, you know, they'd be like, hey, I'm going up to work at the Kings Canyon mine. Okay, well, get to the base of Kings Canyon and then follow the blazes up the canyon to where the mine is at. So that is the purpose for your blazes. Amazingly enough, all these trees are still standing and they have a little bit of history to them now. Still alive, well, might not be still alive. It's on its way. This tree is roughly 100 to 125 years old based on the height of it. As you see more trees, you'll get the same grass. If you look down here, we've got a few more tree blazes and then we're gonna look at the road and show you what happens when you leave no trace and you let the Forest Service close the road. Here's another blaze. Right here, you can see there's been a piece of the bark taken out to make a trail. Somebody blazed a trail. What you can also see here is there was a road at some point. The road is washed out. You can see it was a good sized road, but you can also tell from these trees that are in the road and the ones that have fallen over it, that it's been a good long time since anybody's been up here. The way this road is right now kind of shows you how long it's been since anybody's been up to this claim. And it also shows you how fast mother nature can retake this. This is, we saw that there was claims back here in the early 2000s and you can see there's trees growing in the road today. So the next claim owner, I would really appreciate it if you would doze this road, clean it up and make it nice so that we can drive our trucks up and see the history up at this mine. We're not going to take any of your minerals. We just want to look at the cool history. So yeah, road, trailblazes. That's it. That's all for Gold Rush Expeditions. I'm Corey Schumann. We'll see you at the next site. This is what I wish. I wish that I could come see this. What's it's that fully called? Operating Fulling in its, in its operating glory state. Days. It's glory days. See how many people were actually living here. How many people were working the mine? Did they bring their families? Even if you know, even if they preserved the site and they didn't reopen the road, and you could still hike. I mean, a mile hike with your kids, an easy hike. Even if they cleared up the trail a little bit, how fun would it be to bring your kids up here and say, you know, this is our history. This is why yeah. we're here. This is why the West was settled. I want to imagine if public lands were open to the public and not just the average environmentalist that wants to hike. Public would be people that have trucks, people that have ATVs, people that want to mount a mountain bike up here, and hikers, and they could all do it together. That would be amazing instead of saying, <gasps> Jessica, this God, should be a wilderness. <laughs> this should be a wilderness. It needs to be a wilderness. We need to preserve this for future generations. I don't even Why know what do you're doing anymore.